All right. Hello, everyone. Kyle here, A Zero Z. It is Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I don't know what time it is in Hawaii, but hello, everyone. I got Dan, WD4DAN. Hello, Dan. Hello, Kyle. I got James, K E A P E Z N. Hello, James. What's going on? So, if you weren't around and and uh, weren't you know one of the fifteen hundred people that watched the uh, the horrible Poda activator traits, we did a stream about three or four weeks ago, and we talked about all the horrible things that Poda activators and hunters do. I mean, we had a list, and we had to shut it down because we had so many other other people were giving us um, ideas, but just from our own experiences, we, the, the list was off the chart. So we shut that one down and we decided that we were going to do a good POTA activator traits and habits um, because everyone loves a good POTA activator and a good POTA hunter. So this is an interaction, inter interactive chat or interactive stream. We want to know about all of your um, traits that you try and uh, and use out there in the field and whenever you're hunting and what is a good trait. Um, what you could probably do is think about all the bad things you do and then uh, or people do and then turn them into a positive, right? Just put some better um, better structure around it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna list some activator uh, traits and some hunter traits that you, you, the hunter, and you, the activator, find uh, find rewarding. But first, what we're going to do is let me uh, let me bring up the the share here. So let me bring up the share first. If you don't know, James has got a Discord. The link is in the the chat below or the 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 description below. James Ham Radio Adventure Guy has got a Discord. If you want, if you do Poda. And I know all of you do out there and you want to get in on secret scroll activations and uh, different things. James, James's discord is where you want to hang out. Ham radio adventure guy. He's got a patron that uh, you probably need to join uh, to get some extra benefits. But if you're talking about POTA and want to discuss all things POTA, there's the thing. Um, or the, the discord is the, and then hey, Joe, Joe. <laughs> Hey Joe. Um, <laughs> There is the place you want to hang out. So I wanted to, to uh, bring everyone's attention to that. Here's James's YouTube channel, Ham Radio Adventure Guy. Link is in the chat below. And Dan just started up a channel. And there's Dan, WD4DAN. Again, link is in the description below. So go and subscribe to those guys' YouTube channel. A whole bunch of uh, cool stuff. We need more Ham Radio on, on YouTube. So go subscribe. Back to the habits. All right. I can't remember what we did last time. Did we just list these on? And we yeah, got some... we, yeah, we just made bullet points and got uh, ideas from the chat, and we came up with our own. So. We had, um, oh, uh, Hiking and Hammond has a good one here. Leave no trace, tread lightly. That's a good one. Yeah, we have to remember that Poda parks are part of the system, and anytime you go hiking or out in the wilderness, you should leave no trace, right? Take only pictures and leave only footsteps. It's a very good one. We're gonna we're gonna put uh, actually, let's do activator traits, and let's uh, let's start there. First, I got to figure out how to make a bullet. Like now, my PowerPoint presentation skills are gonna be there. We go. There's a there's your first bullet. So you know what we're gonna we're gonna start off with this leave no trace. How about that? We're gonna start off with that one. Let me bring the uh, the font up. What's some others that uh, good activators do out there? Control your pile up. Uh, control yeah. your whole activation. Uh, it doesn't. There's no wrong way to activate. Whether you're a speed activator like me, or if you're somebody that likes to take it nice and slow and steady like Curtis, you set that tone. You got to set the pace of your activation, because if you don't set that pace, 
the hunters will absolutely run over you and run you into the ground. So let's talk about controlling your pileup, which is a good subject. So in whenever we talked about horrible activator traits, we talked about, you know, letting the, the pileup control you and um, just, you know, everything being out of control. So a good POTA pileup and a good activator, they are listening to what the pileup is talk is saying, right? And James, what do you do? Do you pick out the loudest call? Do you pick out the first call? Do you pick out the last call? Like, how do you run your pileups? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll, we'll go with the, we'll go with the late shift because that's that's when the biggest pile hits is right at late shift. So the first the, I've already developed the speed right before the late shift on how we're going to do it. They already know that we're going to bust them out and we're going to make cues. But right there at the beginning of late shift, uh, what I like to do is I like to let it finish until it's time to not finish. And what I mean by that is that first big long pile up, I'll, I'll listen to it and I'll get me eight or nine names in my head and I'll start throwing them out and giving them signal reports. They'll come back to me. I'll throw out the next one. I'll give them signal reports. They'll come back to me. And as long as nobody asks me a question, because I don't write these people down, I don't type them down. And some people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to be efficient and do this as fastly as possible. That way people can go on and go to other pileups and try to get in. But I work as many as I can. And let's say I had nine and I forgot one of them. When that next one comes through, I'll remember that, and yeah. I'll go ahead and throw him first. But uh, no, I don't take the loudest or the first or the or the last. I take the first. I do take the first person I, I hear and stick his. I'll, I'll type his call in, and then I just listen, and I'll pick me out some more. I might hear. I may hear a QRP that's, you know, a two two. I'll go ahead and throw him in there because you want to get the weak signals as soon as you can because they might fade out on you um so yeah. but I, when i say listen until it's time to no longer let it finish so once you've got you know the first 30 or 40 of a well in my pile up it's the first 30 or 40 it and it starts to thin down you know to you know like only 10 12 people calling at a time <laughs> then you can start going one and two it here one and two and then go ahead and uh, abrupt in it and run them efficiently that way. But at, yeah. at first you've got to get some of that noise out of there. Yeah. I mean, if, if anybody has heard James's pileups, they're a minute and a half long there. It's like a DX petition where, I mean, it, it could be like P five for all you know <laughs> on the air. <laughs> I've never heard of pileups that, that long. They just keep going and going and go, well, I have whenever, like uh, a rare DX gets on for C uh, CQ Worldwide or something. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But um, yeah, I, I I think that your pileups are a little a little unusual. I'll have to say that because you know whenever I was running pileups on single sideband on my nine state Poto Rove, I mean we had twenty meters opened up in New York, and we had probably realistically probably seven to 10 people calling at once, but they, they died down after 15 seconds. And my philosophy is I always take the loudest person. I know that that drives the QRP people up, up the, the wall and the people that are running hundred Watts that have compromised antennas, but it's just easier for me. And the consistency is the key, right? If I can get the loud people out of my pileup faster I can get the QRP people to the forefront faster. That's just my philosophy. Right. I, and I understand that. And, and you, that's kind of where you, where it comes in. And I'm not calling the loud people the bad seed, but yeah. you got, you got to figure out what you're going to do with the bad seeds too. So you've always got somebody that's, I'm going to say whiskey Delta station, and they're going to come back with their call on top of them. And you know, I'm like whiskey Delta station only. And then I get and I get Dan worked and then I then I go, 
all right, Alpha Alpha Station, and that guy comes back and throws his call back again. Is he loud enough to where I can't hear the other stations? Yeah. If so, I just go ahead and get him out of the way. If he's not loud as the other stations and he's just being annoying, I push him back to the very end. Like, I'll make him wait 30 minutes in my pileup because he's just being rude. So, oh, you, yeah. You got you got to you got to work it to where, you know, they're not interfering with you, but if they are, just get them out of the way. And uh so when I do those 8 to 10 people, again, first person I hear, it doesn't matter if they came first, if I just hear a uh, uh Kilo 4, I just put type in Kilo 4 and that that'll be my first even if I hear park to park after that. I'm not erasing what I've already wrote. I'll say park to park. I got you coming in a second and I'll go key 04. But I'll do the first person and then I might hear some because I go on tones. I know my hunters. I know how they call certain calls. It's like key Charlie 3, quack, quack, duck. You know, that's Quebec, yeah. Quebec Delta. And even if he says Quebec, Quebec Delta, when he, when he says Quebec, Quebec Delta, I hear quack, quack, duck because yeah. he did that to break my pile up. So, I hear a bit of weird things like that and I just stored him in my head and, you know, and then I, I always try to get a couple of those loud ones out of the way in those eight to 10, you know, cause you do got to get them out of your way cause they will run everybody else out. But it, it's, it's really funny because if you learn your hunters and you learn their tones, you start to be able to hear low stations just as good as you can hear the high stations. Yeah. So. I, Running pileups comes with experience. The first time that you go out and hunt or uh, activate POTA, it's intimidating. It's very intimidating, right? Um, but it gets better. I guarantee you it gets better. Just like learning CW, just like talking on the radio, the first time you do it, it's horrible, right? The After you go out and activate you know, five or six, seven times, you learn to get into a rhythm, right? And you learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you whenever you're running that pileup, right? Absolutely. You, you, I mean, like I said, you got to take control, you know, and, you know, just like so, if those people keep calling and they're not being aggravated, I'll call them down like, like I'm a kindergarten teacher. I'm like, guys, listen to who I'm call, talking to. I'm only working, you know, I'll get hateful with them. And sometimes it, it, it they, they calm down like the kindergartners and sometimes they just, they're just the, the, the brat in school, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also controlling your pileup also, um, it, it doesn't get to a point where it becomes unruly and then it becomes, it becomes fun, right? That, that's the whole reason why we go out and we, do activations is because you become the dx you become the hunted person everyone wants to call you and it's fun that's that's the whole reason why like you know some people chase chase uh stats some people just like to do national parks and like to you know that's something that like they they get to do out in the wilderness and radio is just a part of it but they they are a hiker and then they're an, an amateur radio operator second some people love to be the dx and that's one of my things that i love and that's why i go out is not only am i chasing some stats but i love whenever people people want to contact me and i i become the dx all right anything else dan you want to add anything to control your pile up not to control your pile up but i got another good activator trait which kind yeah. of comes in in it kind of folds into controlling your pile up be consistent as an activator just like being consistent as a hunter. If if you start taking calls before you say QRZ, if I hear that slip a couple times, I'm gonna try to slip it in there because you're letting that happen. Okay. So I'm us as hunters, we're following your lead as the activator. If you let bad bad behavior happen, there's gonna be bad behavior. So, but be consistent about it. Don't 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 start just taking calls after you say QRZ and then letting one or two people slide in before that because it tells the rest to pile up. All right, it's cool to do that now. So. Yeah, that is a very good uh, observation. Yep. I I find myself, I, I caught myself a couple of times last weekend. I would, 
and this is something that we had on on the the horrible activator traits make qrz the mm -hmm. last thing you say guess what i didn't do multiple times last weekend qrz <laughs> cq poda kid or, or you know i don't know what i said but i and then i'm less like crap qrz should be the last thing i say also people will you know people are like dogs right they they pick up on behavior and they're able to to figure out when you're getting frustrated and when you're getting tired and also if you give a bad hunter an inch they will take a mile right absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh consistent consistent ent horrible that's, spelling that, and and that being consistent that's, that's what your pace as well you know if you're trying to be a speed activator you you stay consistently fast don't don't stay consistently right. fast and then all of a sudden just this is Kivo Echo Eight Papa Zulu November. QRZ. Yeah. Now, but, yeah, you can because be... your hunter, your hunters will will feed off you. Yeah. Like I, I have not only am I the fastest operator in the business, but I have the fastest hunters in the business. Yeah. Like the majority of my hunters, they'll come through, and you're you're five nine New Jersey seventy three. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they just they just ride along with me, and it that helps me keep that pace. You know, of course, you're going to get the, the random stray people that, you know, I had it in CW the other day. <laughs> and dude, I'm, I'm going going along good, you know, and dude's like, what county are you in? <laughs> and at first, I, when, I, when I first heard it, I thought he put country and I put, <laughs> I put USA and, and then, then he went back and put county again. And I was like, I, what I put? I put, uh. IDK or something like that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a clue what county I was in. Yeah, that was that's uh, that was one of our horrible activator or hunter traits. Like know know your station, right? Know who you're contacting, and uh, again, I, whenever I was you know doing the nine state Poterove, I had no idea. Sometimes I had no idea what state I was in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get confused. I mean, I know the feeling when I was up there. It's like, am I in Vermont or oh, well, where am I? You know? Yeah, I definitely yeah. don't know the county. Yeah. Once you do so many parks in a day or something, everything will start running together. I don't care how experienced of an activator. I have thousands of activation. And just today, some, some guy said, and what state are you in? I'm like, Whiskey Victor. I'm like, Ohio, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you uh, can, so so back to being consistent. I won't let people break into my pileup when I'm activating before I say QRZ. I might hear them. Now you can still hear them and be consistent at the same time. Kind of sneak one in on you. Like let let's say Toby jumps in there, Alpha Delta Two Charlie Delta. I heard you, and then I'll say QRZ, and she'll just happen to be the next person I call. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, right, right, right. Yep. Okay. Um, what else? We're taking observations from the chat too. If you have uh, some good traits that you've heard activators uh, do. Um, oh, this is interesting. K6 SUD, small footprint within the park. That's a good one. Yeah, don't string your 160 meter loop up at the park, right? Your sky loop, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's another good one. I'm going to put that. Um, uh, use a small footprint. I kind of go out of my way when I go to the park to be off in a corner somewhere. One for for safety because I don't want somebody over there tripping over my antenna wire, or tripping over my coax, or anything stupid like that. And two, I, I just don't really like people. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you know, I mean. But. There was, um, 
whenever I activated uh, Fort McCleary, which is right there on the ocean in Maine, um, Dan, I think you probably did you activate that one? No, too? no, the only one I did in Maine was with uh, Whiskey One Delta Echo Delta, and we did Bond Woods. Okay, gotcha. So Fort McCleary is right on the ocean, and it's a beautiful site, and a lot of people go there. Um, and it's a small park. And I was doing CW, and I didn't have my headphones on. I just had, um, you know, the speaker going. And I probably had, um, the where I set up was I set up in these rocks off to the side, and I laid my antenna with my mast against, like, this uh, this embankment. And if you watch the video that I put out, you'll see like the, the antenna was totally compromised, but I had so many people. I probably had, I want to say at least six, maybe seven people come over and ask me what I was doing. Yeah. And so I explained to them and, you know, a couple of people were just like Morse code. People still do Morse code. Like that's a thing, you know? And I'm like, Oh yeah, it's a total thing. Um, but it was t in a walkway. And I was in kind of a traffic, or not, I was in a traffic path, but I was beside a tra traffic path of where people were, were you know, taking a look at the park. And um, if I would have had, I wish that I would have had a smaller footprint because I felt like my antenna was in the way, which it wasn't, but I felt like it was in the way, right? And I did have a couple of people that, some people didn't even know the antenna was there, right, until I pointed it out. But... I am always conscious about what type of um, where I'm setting up. And if I can get out of somebody's area and away from from the public, that's my preference. But I don't mind setting up in a small park that um, has some traffic and answering answering, you know, questions about POTA and um and what i'm doing you know you, you get the the i i can't believe amateur radio is a thing are you contacting aliens you know what are these bleeps and bloops morse code is a thing i didn't it, know it was a thing it depends on what park too i mean some of them you got plenty of room like my my local park here is a wma and and i can i can call cq and i'll give you 30 minutes to find me in that park and you're, you're not going to do it because i mean there's tons of, it's tons of tons and square miles and there's trails and you got other smaller ones like, uh, say, the Shot Tower. If you want to run that too, for that's a small area. I mean, you're gonna yeah. have other people around you, you know. So, yep, I activated Shot Tower. Yep, that's a that's a very very small park. Yep. Did you activate it as a two for Kyle? I. Well, I don't know. I'd have to go back and take a look because there's a trail that goes right mm -hmm. past that, right? I don't know. I'll have to take a look. I can't remember. To tell you the truth, James. I don't know if that was a hundred feet from the trail or not. Yeah, there's there's spots. Okay. I, to, I told Dan how to do it. Yeah. I told Dan do how to do it. Yep. Gotcha. I don't think I did. To tell you the truth, because I don't think this place that I set up was a hundred feet from the trail. Yeah, if you were up in the main parking lot or one of those picnic tables up in there, you, you I, were just one for. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. What else are some good POTA activator traits? What about well, like, go ahead, go ahead, James. Well, you know, we kind we kind of just we kind of just focus on that. Do your research. Don't just go into a park and say, "Well, Dan does does shot tower and he did, he did it as a twofer," and then just pull in the parking lot and say you're in a twofer. Do your research and find out where you need to be. To be in that twofer because that's that's some of the biggest mistakes i see in poda is people just automatically well this guy ran it as this it, it's got to be uh it's got to be a twofer or uh, you know where they'll see they'll say uh they'll see a, a state park or something outlined with state forest around it and they're like oh that's that's a twofer it, it, it state park is in the state forest no the state park has its own boundaries yeah. So you got you got to do your research, and that that's that's a really good activator trait, because yeah. you know people will call you out on being stupid, really quick. <laughs> there was a couple in New Hampshire that I wasn't quite sure because I didn't research them very thoroughly beforehand if there were twofers or not. So what I did, 
I activated it as a one for, and before I left, I zoomed in on my Google Maps to get my GPS coordinate. I took a screenshot of it, and then I researched later exactly where I was to figure out if, if I was in the two for or not. So, yeah, because you can always upload that log later. I mean, you can run it as a two for on the air, and then you know, just upload it as a the other part later. Yeah. Uh, people people know that i do my research that's why i'm notorious for getting emails and and messages and like hey is this a twofer is this a threefer can i do this so it's kind of a, a curse too but you know just just do your research it's, it's with anything you know if you're if you're planning a rove you know and you're you're going overnight is is all these parks that i'm scheduling going to be open you know yeah Dan, that's a that's a good point. You can always activate as a one for if you're not sure, and then go back and do your research, and then submit your log as a second part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, later. you could do a one for because I mean, you should damn well know if you're in one park at least, you know. Right. I hope. <laughs> that guy well, was calling CQ yeah. Poda. Yeah. He, he wasn't we, even in a park. We, we won't say any names, but you know, yeah, it does happen. It does happen. <laughs> that's great. Just you know, he wasn't cheer. even in that damn park and he was calling CQ Poda. You know. <laughs> uh James uh was a KI5 nine? Oh, I can't even say KI5 O E B. That screen is so far away from me, I can't see it. Tell That's everyone cool. your park number occasionally, your call, and then QRZ. Identifying your yeah, one thing that I absolutely hate in contesting <laughs> is whatever people are running pileups and they're just saying QRZ. I mm. absolutely, it chaps my ass. Me personally, I kind of took a clue from, from my, uh, my activation Elmer on the bottom there. Um, I won't say my call sign every time about every third QSO. I'll say my call sign always after a park to park. I'll say my call sign. Um, but I give my park number every QSO, every single QSO. I'll be like Alpha Alpha Zero Zulu, you're five nine into eighteen ten. If I was at Chief Logan, thanks every single park. QSO. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the new part. Yeah, but every QSO I give the park number every third, fourth, fifth at max, depending on how fast you're coming in. My call sign's going out. So. I have a very bad habit that I need to break is I don't say my call sign often enough whenever I'm activating CW. I have a bad habit that I need to break on that. I, I've noticed CW. I do too. I do too. Now that you just said that. Yeah. I've noticed on CW, it's either it's, it, it's, it's yes or no on that. Um, if you don't have a pile, when you call CQ, you'll obviously put your call sign out there. But if you're running a pile, you have activators that that don't send their call sign basically ever, or they send their call sign as the part of the seventy three. Their call sign did did. Yeah. Well, you know, so whenever you look at, um, and this is for all the CW operators out there. Whenever you look at Thomas Witherspoon or Aaron Bowman W four ARB. Um, or some of the other guys that do parks on the air with CW, you always notice that I they send, you know, um, thank you 73 or thank you for Mo, you know, thank you Mo uh, 73 DE W um, W4 or K4 SWL or W4 ARB. And for some odd reason, whenever I get into CW mode, I always feel like, I'm I always rush myself. I should slow down on CW. And I always feel anxious. So I always think, you know what? I hate whenever people are waiting. So therefore I rush the 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 ending and I never put my call in there. I don't it's, there's something that I need to work on and I just feel like people are so are waiting on me to to get rid of or get done with this QSO so I can move on to the next QSO. I have yeah. to, I have to call tell myself, you know what? People are going to wait. I'm going to send my call sign D E A E zero Z K and then move on to the next call. 
You know, I, I'm bad about that in CW too. I, and I never even realized it until you just said it. Yeah. I think, you know, there could be, <laughs> it could be a stretch of literally 10 to 15 minutes where I don't send my call. You know, I have to get better at that. I, I wouldn't say that much for me, but yeah. you know, but I, I don't do that whenever I'm running single sideband. For some odd reason, it's a natural thing to say my call and then QRZ. I don't either, but I, I can handle that that pile up. You know, I can handle any pile up. I don't care what pile up you give me. I can handle it in sideband. But my CW pile ups are stupid too. And I pretty much, when I'm doing CW with those kind of pile ups, I'm in full panic mode. You know, I've done, you know, 1500 QSOs this year in CW and it's still, I'm like, I got to get these guys out of the way. I got to get, I got to get it to where it's manageable. You know, <laughs> if, if you want to listen to a, a squeaky uh, um, gate on CW, <laughs> go and listen. James dropped a, a video today, yesterday, James today, today. Go listen to, go watch that video. Maybe we'll play a little bit after we're done here. I've never heard anything like it. One, it sounds like a rusty gate. And two, I have never heard the pileup. Like, it's just, <laughs> you just, you have to experience it yourself. It's like Bouvet. The only difference is we could hear him. <laughs> it, 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 and I don't think people understand that when, when, like I had a guy earlier in this week and he was throwing a fit because he, he was saying that I was five, nine there and, and I wasn't hearing him. Well, watch that video and see what I do here. And you tell me if you can hear everybody. You know, It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, this is, this is a POTA activation. This is a P five. <laughs> and I remember when you were there making that video, because I heard myself call in that big pileup once and i know i called every time thereafter but i didn't even hear myself in the pilot and i was listening for me and you know how hard that is and i was like wow yeah david makes a good uh observation hunters only hear half the pilot at most yeah that's yeah. a very good observation all right um what else good activator traits chat i'm looking at you what are your what are some good activator uh traits Dan, James, what else do you got? Anything? Larry brought up something. I think it was Larry. Um, something about letting hunters tell. It's not necessarily a good activator trait, but hunters trying to tell the activator how to run their activation. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it's your activation. Run it how you want. I mean, don't don't listen to us. I mean, yeah. really. I mean, just go out there, have fun, you know? If you want to, you know, have a mini QSO with somebody every call, do it. I'm Absolutely. not going to be happy about it, but you're not out there to please me. So I mean, I, I, go have I fun, mean, you know. I, I, I'm a uh, Poda Elmer to several people. And, you know, I, that's the first thing I tell them when I take them out. And I'm like, don't try to activate like me. Activate like you want to be for yourself. Although, although, you know, the boys, they didn't listen to me. They, they're they just little mirrors of me. You know? Machine you know, they're, language robots, yeah. They're, they're yeah. just little, little machine language robots is what they are. But, you know, that's just like a lot of people, you know, everybody wants to activate with me. And, and, and people don't realize what those pileups are like. And they're like, you know, we'll be getting ready to go in. I was like, well, what do you want me to bring? Oh, I've got everything. I'll, I'll log for us and everything. Okay. Cool. And then the, the, the sheer panic that overcomes people when they try to log for me, it, it's it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lou has a good one. If you want to Yeah, that's that. a very good one. Yeah, hang on. So let's go. Uh, let's see, Lou... All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to lose here. Um, Izzo, give park to park and other groups priority, mobiles, QRPs, but it's the, but in the end, it's your choice. So I like to, 
I mean, once the pileup dials dies down, I have no problem calling out for for QRP stations and mobiles and and things like that. <laughs> the park to parks for for some odd reason the the P to P that comes loud and clear, and I can hear that you know as totally. I can I can totally you know hear that. Um, but yeah, that's I think. What do you guys think about giving priority to to different groups? Uh, I mean, I, I try my best. It's sometimes hard in those big pileups, you know, to every five or so minutes just to say, do I got any QRPs? Do I got any DX? Do I got any? I, I do do it at least once or twice in an activation. But yeah, the park to parks, they normally come through very easy. And the hunters are good about, you know, I call November 3X for Lima Sierra and he'll be like, you're five nine, you got a park to park in there. You know, people are yeah. pretty good about getting park to parks in. The QRPs, I don't give them enough priority, but most people who hunt me QRP are repeat hunters, and they literally can say QRP in my pileup, and I I never even say the QRP station. I call their call sign back and give yeah. them a signal report. Yeah, Be because that that that's a that's that's as a hunter, if I, okay, I'm the award giver. I give more awards than any poter person there is, you know, it's, people, people want awards that they hunt me. So they, if you, if you want awards and you hunt me over and over and over and over again, I'm going to know your call sign, you know, and when I say that I'm the award giver, it's it, every stream that goes by or everything, somebody will say, Hey, I need four QSOs at this park. I need, I need this park for the, it, it, it's just it's a constant thing like you know people people think you know that, that everything i do for a poda is me really it's not you know yeah. i do i do a lot of stuff back for the poda community because they've done a lot for me and you know like don't don't want parks that's not in my rotation because you know i have goals for myself and that 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 normally works off a rotation of parks but yeah. when people need something, I go out, you know, out of my way and get it for them. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, so, part, yeah, so park to parks, I'll push to the front of the line when I hear you because I know you want to get in and out and get on your activation. Um, QRP, I really don't specifically call for, but I'm, but I'll hear them in there. I'm pretty good about picking them out. Now, I will say I'm going to start calling Izzo probably directly from now on after the bag he ate the other night. <laughs> So I'm just saying, Ape, Ape has got a a very uh, uh, interesting comment. Uh, Ape says, "I personally feel that you should ignore <laughs> QRP operators. They only do it for the attention." <laughs> the uh, best comment I good. ever heard during an activation was James Gallows, and the PP <laughs> man was trying to hunt him. I don't remember where he was at the Cuba. at the time. He was Cuba. It's Cube, okay. Yeah. A, a PP man goes QRP, and he goes QRP station. Nobody has time for that. Turn up the power and come back. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. So Lou had uh, <laughs> had a comment. Upload your logs promptly, please. Yes, I agree. Like, please don't wait a month to upload. Like, I mean. Unless you're, unless you're activating maybe Antarctica, <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised that they don't have like you know internet there at the uh, they do. They do. They <laughs> at that station. Get, upload those logs promptly, and and don't. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call anybody out because that's just not me. But don't say that you can't upload your logs because you don't have good internet access and you post that on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm gonna <laughs> right. look at you and go. Okay, gotcha. Here, here, here. Recently, somebody just dropped a, dropped about two months worth of logs, and their excuse is they don't have good internet service, but they post on Facebook daily. Yeah, there are so. I mean, if you use hammers, if you use any any large, well known logger out there, they have all incorporated, except for maybe I don't know N one mm. They've all incorporated. 
the POTA standard and you literally export it to ADIF, go to the POTA website, upload your log. I mean, you, you literally could stop your activation and within two minutes, if, you know, granted, I understand you probably don't have a hotspot on your phone, but within, if you do have a hotspot on your phone and you're looking up people in QRZ and you've got, you know, your hotspot on and you're using hammers, you can literally have your log uploaded in less than two minutes. Easily. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. it's not so, like it's a huge file or anything. I mean, so if I'm doing five or under parks in a day where I'm not in a rush, I typically at the end of my activation will turn my hotspot on my phone and I will send my log to QRZ right then. And after I look at it in QRZ and, and, and make sure that there wasn't nothing drastic mistake wise, I, I will go ahead and send it straight to Poda right there in the park before I ever even tear down anything. If I'm doing a rove and I don't have a driver, it, it'll be up that night. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm paranoid. The only time I don't do it in the same day is if I'm like at a ham fest or something and somebody else done the logging for me and I'm waiting on them to send it to me. And then I'm, I'm typically emailing them saying, Hey, where's that log at? Yeah. Yeah. Ed, what's what's hard about uploading the log to the Poto website? Maybe that's a mistype. Uh, only thing I can think of is if you try to do it on your phone. Sometimes it says it can't because of the screen resolution. Oh yeah, so you, they need to fix to rotate that. It. But other than that, I haven't had any upload problems. Yeah, yeah, that's that is. Yep, you bring up. Uh, okay, Ed says yeah on my phone. Okay, yep. And I got the I got the skinny on why that is. By the way, it was mentioned in a and a support thing that I believe it was on the Poda Facebook, the, um, the table that it gives you afterwards, um, it has to be a certain width for the screen. So they won't let it cause it won't look good or something like that. Gotcha. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what if you turn your phone sideways and try it? Depends on your resolution of your phone on mine. It works fine, but on older, like on older phones that have smaller resolution, even sideways, it, it may still not work. I don't know. What if you just tilt your head 90 degrees and hold your tongue sideways? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else, you know, we're running, we got 15 minutes. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, anybody have any more things that they want to put on the list for activator? We're going to move to Hunter. Anybody? Bueller, Bueller, Fry. My best friend's sister's boyfriend heard from this kid. <laughs> oh, for all you millennials out there, if you don't know, go watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off. One of the best movies ever made. I agree. Best Before we go to Hunter, I'll, I'll say one more. Best activator trait there is. Activate every single day of your life. <laughs> all right, we're going to put to James. <laughs> Oh, no, don't put that on there. I'm just with you. <laughs> Bailey's we... Prodder bust. <laughs> I, day, yeah, day. Uh, all right. On to uh, now that now the chat is filled with uh, Ferris Bueller quotes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Old Jeannie. She's got a scorching case of herpes, too. <laughs> Whoever's in my house, I want to let you know. There was one time I could recite almost every single uh, line to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but not anymore. I have forgotten them. Now I'm going to watch that tonight. Oh, uh, it's so good. Thanks, it guys. Is. Oh, I know it's good. I... It's just that time now. <laughs> uh, I thought you were catatonic. Um, all right. So, good. <laughs> <laughs> good hunter traits. Listen, 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 and listen some more. Hmm. It's just like calling the DX. Don't, if you don't know the activator's call sign, don't call them. Because me as a hunter, when I hear somebody call and say, hey, I need your call sign and your part number. I'm like, I want to reach through the microphone. Yeah. N yeah. Know who you're calling. And know that 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 park number, 
And I understand that sometimes, so here's another thing that maybe we'll put this on the, the list. If you're in like five parks or you're in four parks, even if you're in three parks and it's not on the spotting page, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes during that pileup, in the next couple of minutes, someone is going to say their call sign and all of their parks, right? That is your opportunity to grab all those parks and write them down and not be that person who is asking again and again and again what three parks they're at. If you if you were listening through the pileup and you couldn't get through the pileup and he said the three parks or she said the three parks four times, fooey on you. Don't go and ask the, the activator for their park again. You should have been writing them down. Just go go back in the spot history. It's going to be in there. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that is one of my pet peeves also is whenever I'm sitting there listening to a pileup and every third hunter is asking what the park number is. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. But, you know, that's what everyone does. What's a great way? What's your park number? My park number is F. No, sorry. Um, what's another one? Only reply with your call sign if that's what the activator wants. Yeah, all right. So in other words, if, if James says uh, Whiskey Delta Station again, and then I come back with just my call sign, Whiskey Delta Four Delta Alpha November, but somebody else at the same strength or even louder than me says this is whiskey delta zero abc year five nine in new york the goat then goes on the whole spill james might not be talking to that guy you might be talking to the other whiskey delta yeah and then he just said all that for nothing and he's gonna have to say it again eventually when james gets around to him so just say your call sign and then when you're recognized then give you your signal report yeah so or actually, it's not only reply with your call sign, it's listen for your call sign. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if he calls for whiskey deltas and and let's say just by chance, you it, your call sign starts with a, I don't know, a, a kilo and maybe an eight. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't reply. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was a little inside joke there. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, just, and that goes back to, I got a feeling all these we're going to list goes right back to the first bullet point. Just listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Um, what about if you, we, we hunt or we, we talked about it before, like should hunters be asking for counties or, um, grid squares if, like no if if you were hunting a potus station and you need them for a grid square or a county hunt them because they are a pota activator hunt them for the pota and send them an email afterwards and ask them to help you or just look on the park page and yeah we yeah the grid square park page has the grid square you you, you know if i'm in uh beach fork state park uh, kilo 1800 you look up kilo 1800 find out where that is and, and you can put hey what's what's county is barbersville west virginia in you know it's it's not really hard to do yeah and it goes back to do re, do your research yeah you know if i'm if i'm calling cq grid squares then you can ask me my grid square now now i will make accommodations i actually all right so one of them our local parks, Reed Bingham actually is in two counties, depending on what side of the bridge you're on. R.D. Bailey is too. Yeah. And I was in, I was on the Cook County side one time activating and, and I saw I got an email and um, I got done with my email. Well, I got done with my activation. I read my email and a guy asked me what county is it. I said I was in Cook and he said, oh, I need call quit. So I replied to his email and said, hey, meet me on this frequency. Let me drive across the bridge. And I'll get you the county. That's no problem. You know? 
Yeah. Joseph said, make sure you have clean audio. Yeah. I think that's part of just making sure your equipment is up to snuff, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that interferes. People remote in and, you know, remotes, some remotes make some crazy noises. And, you know, well, just like my guests from my stream last night, they were trying to remote in from their cell phone. And when they do that, it sounds like Mickey Mouse is on fast forward. I, I can't understand nothing. It's just like Mickey Mouse. Going, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I always say, please copy. That's right. Please copy. Yep. <laughs> I got uh, on my last CW round table. I was talking about how OM got me all piped up too. And sure enough, last weekend or last week on the Rove, I probably got 30 or 40 people that just sent me OM over and over. Let's see. Uh, good hunter so, traits. I mean, I'll so, say it again. Consistency. All right. So as a good hunter, you want to be consistent. So whenever you, whenever you say that, do you mean whenever you say your call, it's consistent? Every you're saying time. every single time and, you, and you're That's saying right. your call once? whenever you throw that Once. out in the pileup now now okay so there's a caveat to this because i'm guilty of it only say your call sign once so you hear qrz just throw your call sign out there one time where you time it in their pileup is totally up to you but don't sit there and just say it 18 times in a row i mean i've been guilty to say it twice i mean yeah but but, but what he's meaning by consistent is say your call sign the same yeah. every time because an activator will pick up on that and, and it it might be and this is the best hunter trait for breaking a pile up know when to send it by the, the way the activator is activating and know what to insinuate in your call sign like if i'm hunting that rare occasion that i'm hunting i'm kilo echo eight papa zulu november they'll hear my zulu every time yeah you know and and know what to do to get that 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 activator to hunt you and, and dan dan is the, well dan uses a key uh a program for one but that's why dan is so consistent but there's people out there that will use just their microphone mm -hmm. and they say their call sign exactly yep. the same every time a matter of fact a young lady that was on my stream last night november 8 romeo charlie lima she is she is a youth and she is so consistent with her call. That so, I mean, that family was amazing. Like almost yeah. every single one of them has their call or their amateur radio license, and they're all like doing poda, like they're all crazy for poda. Yeah. Yeah, they have their own talking frequency to the park. <laughs> It's crazy, man. That's what I asked him. I was like, so when you guys do a family picnic at the park, yeah. do you have your own talk-in frequency? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that That's family it. was huge. It was one, two, three, four, five, five kids, six kids. Oh, there's nine total it, just in that immediate family. Now, their Brief. uncles and aunts all have kids, too. You know, and there are several of them. And there, there's 23 total in the immediate family that are hams. Wow, you know consistency. I I think is is one of the big things because if you want to break pile ups or even if you want to be heard when you're a two two, you know somebody there. There's plenty of activators that I know I'm not strong to in in like Jeremy in Alaska or uh yeah or or Cosette up there and some places in in uh, the Yucatan or you know wherever that if you say your call sign consistently every single time there's many many activators out there that can know it's me just by hearing a whiskey or a delta or a four or a delta or an alpha or a november if they hear one of those letters they know it's me there's, i think the, yeah go ahead james there's hunters that will test me that you know they know i go by tones and certain things and that they'll get in in my pileups and they'll just say random weird things or dan <laughs> dan will dan will get in there and go what what what, what? And, and, you know at a pileup of you know, people running fifteen hundred watt amps. He he's going what, what, 
and I'll call him. Yep. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy because if you say certain things consistent, an activator will pick up on that. Yeah. One thing that they teach us in Contest University, if you go there before Dayton or sometimes Contest U is, is um, held at uh, your local or your big uh, DXCC conventions around the, around the, the U.S. If you can act like a big station, act like you've got a big station, right? You could be QRP and act like you got a big station. Now, acting like a, you've got a big station does not mean that you're acting like unlawfully and you're not throwing your call sign out 300 times. And, but if you're acting like you're a big station, you will be loud and you will be heard, you know? Um, and consistency is, is the key to that. And also, Dan, you brought up a really good point on, we've talked about this before, know the activator and know when to call, right? So if that activator is taking the first person that they hear get in quick if they're taking the the person that they hear the la th at the last part or trailing off be the last person to to possibly get in there and throw your call out consistently but be quick about it right and know how your activator is running a pileup right the more times you you run a pileup and you find out your flow and your how you run that pileup and, and where you take calls, you take the loudest call, you take the, the last call, however you take that, manage that pileup, you will learn, oh, I do that too. And then if I was in that activator's position, what am I going to do? How would, wh where would I insert my call so that activator can pick me up sooner than later? Right. Yep. And it was mentioned earlier in the chat too. keep in mind, too, that as a hunter, you might be only hearing half of the pileup that the activator is hearing. Yeah. So so even if it's if it's quiet, you know, midway through the pileup just drops off. You might think that's clear space, but there might be a whole nother pileup that the activator is hearing that you can't hear. So your timing has to go by what you hear. It's not necessarily what the activator is hearing. So it's a lot of guesswork. Yeah. But, so Larry's got. A comment here that I think we need to address here on I was working tonight and called about 10 times in 20 minutes could not get through. So, Larry, for that, you know, obviously, I don't have a crystal ball and I wasn't hearing you in the pileup. So I have no idea. I'm just taking this, you know, totally blind. But were you mixing up if if one if one process was not working for you? Did you change your process and did you change something else like you know, if you were throwing your call out, for example, I'm not call, I'm not saying that you did this, Larry, because, you know, I'm sure that you're a smart person and you probably ch this is old news to you. But if you're throwing your call out, you know, three seconds after that person says QRZ and it's just nothing but just noise. And you do that three or four times and you understand that you're not getting through, change your process. Yeah, if, if you can't figure out when the activator's taking his calls first or last or loudest or whatever, don't ever try to go late. Either go right as soon as he goes. I mean, don't keep the mic and pause. As you're keying up that mic, start calling your call sign. Or go at the very end. Don't try to go a couple seconds in because chances are they're not taking them from there. Yeah, yeah. You know, there it's a game. There's not a crystal ball. No one has the keys. There isn't, um, you know, if you've got a an activator that's erratic, erratic and are just taking, you know, they don't manage their pileup, it, it can be frustrating and it can be tough, right? Well, being an erratic activator as a hunter sometimes is fun because I like the challenge. So... So it's not necessarily a good activator trait to always take the first call you hear in a pileup or the last call. That that really depends on how the pileup is that day, to be honest with you. Yeah, so, that's a good point. So some activators will work the front of the pile, some will work the middle, some will work the end. Some will work the front and the next call, they'll work the end, and then they'll work another end, and then a middle and a front. You never know. Those ones, to me, are fun because there's 
there's no consistent pattern there. So it's a lot of guesswork. And when I break those pileups, it's like I did something. You know? Yeah. 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 You know, mo you mo mo most of them are consistent, the beginning or the end or somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm more of that person that, that takes multiple all the mm -hmm. way through. That's why I listen to the whole thing. So, I mean, for me, as long as you're knowing what, how to say your call, or and what to insinuate you're you're, you're pretty much going to get in but you know try different spots if you're not getting in at the beginning try to end try somewhere else mm -hmm. a lot of this comes with practice too right yeah. i mean i i know contesters who have been contesting for for 30 plus years and they know exactly when to call they know you know even if that person is going to be, let's say, at that station for 30 minutes, they know to come back in 20 because the band will change. Or yeah. they know that, um, you know, I, I know contesters who have removed all of their amps and now they're contesting QRP because now it's more of a challenge for them. But they still know, they still rack up all the points because they have all of that band knowledge on how that band is changing throughout the day, throughout the next 30 minutes how that band is going to be different to California or to New York, you know, mm -hmm. or if that activator changes bands and you see that activator now on 40 meters, now's my chance because now my 40 meter antenna is better, or I have a better chance of getting into West Virginia on 40 meters than I do on 20 meters. So we're coming to the end. How, uh, any more, hunter traits good hunter traits should we put in here anything from the chat you guys want to put in no when to call them no when to fold them no when to walk away no when to run hmm. yeah yeah i mean there's times i mean if i don't get into james's late shift pile right when the utc day rolls over i'll go hunt like 20 other stations and then go back to him. Yeah. Because I know he's still going to be there. You know, I mean, no, he's not going anywhere. And that's again, knowing the activator, he's not going to just, you know, unplug his radio in the middle of a pileup. He's going to stay there until there's no more blood to draw. And so, I, I mean, I, I just won't waste my time because there's a ton of other stations that are a lot more stronger than I am that are just pounding the crap out of him. So I'll yeah. go work other people and then just go back to him. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's a good point. If you sit on the POTA <clears throat> website long enough or the spotter page, you're going to recognize calls over and over, right? And you're going to know who's out there for the long term and who's out there just do, getting their 10 contacts and, and possibly moving on or quitting for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, I wish that there was a better way to like declare roves, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could probably put, put it in the, um, you know, as a comment, like I'm on a rove, you know, three parks today or whatever the you know case may be. But I wish that there was like a better way to like almost, you know, map my drive, map my parks. It, it, it depends on if you plan them. Like um, when I did my activation in Vermont on the way back to the lake house happened to be a crap ton of parks that are just right off the road, you know, the main road there. I wasn't planning on a road. I said, I'll hit. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I hit five or six or whatever. Then I started looking at the map and I brought up Google Earth and I'm like, I ended up doing 16. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Good point. And here, and here comes that shameless plug for my Discord once again. So I, I, I actually went on a road this morning that was unplanned. I got a message last night as I was getting ready to lay down about 1.30 saying I'm leaving in about an hour. I'm going to Western Kentucky for a delivery in the morning. Said, I'll be there early enough. You can probably get, you know, three or four of those that you need in. And I'm like, yeah, come pick me up, you know? So this morning, the the, the first thing I do is pop, pop in Discord, like I'm roving today. It's going to be ins and outs. If you want me, be ready, you know? Yeah. And you know, the very first park I did, I went ahead and spotted on POTA because it was 6.30 when I activated first this morning. 
and I wanted to make sure and get that one over with and quickly. But every park after that on that row, I only spotted in my Discord. And, you know, those were all like two and three minute activations because yep. they, they knew to be ready that I was roving. Yeah. And you get the heads up too, like you just showed the Discord there. And, and yeah, Joseph, so yeah, Joseph, Joseph right here, yeah. yeah it just posted that uh, he's giving us a head, heads up. There's going to be a four op activation at those two parks, you know, t- you know tomorrow night and, and, and over the weekend. So, yep. All right. Very good. We are six minutes over again. James is POTA. I'm sorry. James is a discord <laughs> link is in the description below. Um, here's James's uh, YouTube. Go and subscribe. Here's Dan's new YouTube. Dan, so Dan is the the creator of the POTA stats page. And if you go take a look at how to POTA stats on your QRZ page, go take a look at uh, that video. It's um, you can boast about your POTA stats to everyone that um, that goes to your QRZ page. And I believe this Sunday I've got a hack. On, Q, on how to uh, manipulate some things on QRZ that you shouldn't be able to ma- manipulate. I don't know if they, they know about it. They probably do, but uh, that's coming out on Sunday. So <laughs> They'll know about it that. soon. <laughs> They'll let, he'll know about it soon, right? So anyway, um, yeah, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. We're here live on Thursdays until uh, they pull the plug. I've got... Uh, New CW Operators Roundtable this coming Monday. I don't know what our topic is going to be. i got to figure out a topic, but 8 p.m. Central, where we talk about everything CW from the new operator standpoint. And, um, yeah, that's about it. It's going to be about squeaky gates. Squeaky, squeaky gates, gates. <laughs> yeah. It's a freaking squeaky gates. Dan, uh, you got anything else you want to you want to plug here? No, that's it. Uh, just... Uh... This is a lot of good, uh, good and bad hunter activator traits that we went through the last two episodes of this. So this, uh, this is basically just our opinion too. Like I said, if you're an activator, go out there, have fun, run your, run your activation how you want to run it. So. Yep. If you got any more, put them in the comments below. James, anything you want to plug? No, I'm just gonna be in parks every day until I don't know until they put me in the ground. I guess. all right on that note uh, we'll see everyone uh later now i gotta figure out 73 everybody i'll tell you about it's the red button kyle oh okay there we go all right got it